Hi, I'm George, welcome to GMAX, and in this video we are going to model this low-poly retro video game handheld and learn how to render it out in a pixelated retro style that's kind of like PS1 era uh, or maybe even like early DS kind of graphics. Uh, so let's get right into it. Um, here I am, I'm just going to start a new project in Blender and I'm going to take my light and my camera I'm going to move those into a collection I'll just call it stuff and then we'll hide that collection because I don't need it right now um, but here I have my cube uh, basically I'm just gonna model off of this cube model this kind of retro kind of inspired by the Game Boy uh, just like the idea of what a Game Boy looks like in my head um, nothing too specific we want that kind of low poly style so I'm going to take it, I'm going to scale it on the z-axis. We're going to get it, I know Game Boy is kind of squat, so we'll get it like there. And then we'll also scale it on the y, or x rather. Um, I know the Game Boy is pretty thick as well, so we'll get it to like there, maybe. Perfect. Uh, that's our lovely little start. Uh, and then I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'll apply that scale first before I go, just in case I want to bevel anything. Um, I'm going to then uh, cut this actually in half with a uh, loop cut and then I'm going to grab this front face and I'm going to uh, scale it down. Ba -da -ba. Now the screen on the Game Boy is actually rather small but I'll keep it big so that we can see it. There we go. And then I'm going to extrude that along what I have as my x-axis just in a little bit so it's kind of inset. Perfect, and there we go. That's that's the gist. Uh, that's the basis. Um, and now uh, we are going to also now model our kind of D-pad, and we are going to model our buttons. Um, so uh, we are going to do that again rather easily. We're going to start with a cube for our D-pad. We'll scale it down, and we'll bring it out. Um, we can scale that to make it a little thinner. And we'll find a good place to put it. I'm thinking like X. This is basically going to be the middle of the D-pad. Again, we're going low poly here. So I'm just going to keep it real simple. We'll put it like there. And then maybe move it over a little bit more. And then into edit mode, I'm going to grab that top face. Extrude it up. Um, I guess actually I can do this. I can grab both these faces, SZ, find it, and then I can just R, two loop cuts, because those will be evenly spaced amongst, now we have thirds, and then I can go into my faces and grab those two, and then scale along my, or extrude, I'll have to do extrude one at a time, extrude, and then my Y, we'll say like there. Extrude like there. And now this is rather thick, so I'm going to grab all these faces. I actually want to grab all of these. There we go. And scale again along my Y axis. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll make sure everything's merged together. There we go. That should be that should <laughs> that should work out now. Um, and there we go. So we want to uh, scale Y Perfect, we'll get that like There and I can also then pull this this Again drag this in there we go d-pad uh, Perfect, I got my d-pad set up and now I just want I'll get the two buttons that are common on a Game Boy like the A and B buttons So that will be simple as well. We're just going to grab a cylinder we're going to go along our, uh, rotate it along our y-axis, 90 degrees, um, and we'll scale that way down. Again, we want these rather big because we want this detail to sell when we kind of uh, get that kind of graphic style going for the render. And there we go. GX. We'll again, maybe pop it out a little more than the D-pad. Not worrying too much about it. Awesome. Um, and then I'm going to go into edit mode again, three, to grab this face. I'm going to scale this in, and then I'm actually going to uh, get into my edge select mode, and then I'm going to scale this down. 
Perfect. And we'll do something like that. Scale. And then I'm actually just going to duplicate that button. And bring that sideways. And then maybe scale it down just slightly. Perfect. Um, and that's, I think, all I'm going to give this little Game Boy-esque thingy. Maybe place those buttons a little bit better. There we go. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select, apply my scale to everything I can because uh, I'm going to add some modifiers. I'm just going to add bevel modifiers just to smooth things out. <laughs> that is very intense. Um, so maybe I won't do it on this little cross section just because it's beveling all of these as well. Um, so if I give it a little bit more, a couple more segments, um, and I can even make that a smaller amount. There we go. I just want that little bit right there, and I'll shade that smooth. Perfect. This, I'll also give a, uh, a bevel to. There we go. Again, I'll give it to like five segments. Um, I'll keep that 0.1 as the amount. Shade smooth. It's giving some funkiness, so we'll just make sure our normals auto smooth off. Perfect. Um, and now for this other one, exact same thing. Uh, bevel. Five. And shade smooth. We'll check those normals. There we go. Now we got our buttons and we got our little uh, D-pad. Uh, and now we're going to do it on this main body as well. So we'll see how this affects it. Bevel. There we go. And that's pretty nice. That's basically what I wanted. Um, perfect. Uh, so... Now we have a nice little Game Boy kind of thing. Um, I know the Game Boy also has a curve down here, which you could uh, go into edit mode and, and kind of bevel that out. You could select this edge, control B, um, and bevel that. Oh, why not? I'm already doing it. So let's do that. Select a couple. I should be looking at this as I do it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll just keep that. Perfect. And that's a little Game Boy um, with that nice bevel even. Um, there we go. So uh, now I'm just going to uh, quickly texture this. So I'll go into my material, my look dev mode, um, and I'll pull up a new window. Object mode, we'll go to, uh, actually we'll go to our shader editor. And we can take this, and so I'm just going to start with the body. So we'll name this like, body. Uh, and this will be like kind of that off gray, almost tan color. So maybe we give it a little darker, and then we'll make it slightly kind of yellow reddish uh, we'll start with that um, it might get a little more tan as things go on maybe we'll make it a little brighter a little more on the orange side there we go we'll say that that's maybe a little more gray is the actual color so we can desaturate it a little bit anyway uh, we're gonna now uh, go on to our d-pad so I'll name that uh, d-pad and this will make that kind of dark bluish gray color. Yeah, we'll just do that for now. Uh, and then this will be uh, button one. Button with an I, I guess. And then we'll give this one a material two. Button with an O. Button two. So button two. Uh, I know these, I think, are both the same color on... Uh, on, on a Game Boy, but I'll, I'll vary it a little bit. So this one... Uh, we'll make, we'll make kind of a yellow, a yellowish kind of orangey color. And this one will make just a pure red, maybe a little purplish. There we go. So those are our colors for our buttons. Um, and now lastly, I'm going to again, go into my edit mode, uh, just to select this for the body, add a new, uh, slot, assign it, um, and then we'll add a new material and name this screen. Uh, and this one I'm actually going to uh, add an emission texture. I'm going to render this in Eevee. So we're going to add an emission and maybe I'll give it a like slightly blue greenish tint. We'll pretend this is like backlit and maybe I'll just bump that up to like five. Um, and now I'm going to go into my render settings. Uh, we'll turn on the ambient inclusion just cause and bloom. Uh, maybe that's a little too much. Maybe I'll do two. I just want it slightly glowing. Um, if you wanted to add even more detail, you could maybe grab a picture or a movie and put that in here and kind of as it goes, it will it will play. Um, but I don't really need that. Um, I'm also about to animate this. So while I'm in my render settings, I'll just check in motion blur. Um, and I'll also 
uh, turn on my transparent background and I'll also go to medium high contrast for my look. Um, so I'll quickly also set up my lighting. So I'll go to my render settings. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to have kind of a contrasting background, maybe like a blue for my background, something like that. So I'll just lighten up that back and I'll choose a blue color. Um, nothing too strong. I kind of like how that makes this look perfect. Maybe I'll go just a tad bit. There we go. We'll say that almost kind of just an off white for my background uh, lighting. Um, and then we can see if I bring back this light, we can see where we might want that to go. Maybe I want it kind of up here to get a couple little bit of shadows. Like there needs to be a reason why we need this backlit because um, of the glare and maybe whatever. Um, I like that. We can just get some shadows on here. Just add a tiny bit more detail. We'll see how it looks in the final render. Uh, but there we go. So that's the base just, just of it. So now I'm going to select all of these items, the D-pad and my two buttons. Select them and then select lastly uh, the body. Control P. Object, I'll just keep object, keep transform. Now if I move this body, the buttons move with it. Um, perfect, so I'm going to animate this. First, I just kind of want this to rotate along the Z axis. So with my timeline down here, I'm gonna start my first frame. I'll make this 120 frames per second, or total, so I actually wanna go to 119 since I want this to loop. Uh, and I'm actually going to go to my output settings and change it to 30. There we go. Um, so I will actually, I'm going to kind of make this rotate kind of back and forth like that. So uh, I actually want to pick kind of a stopping point I want that to be at. So I'm thinking something, finding out why this looks good. We'll say, yeah, we'll just do 45. We'll make it nice and even. So this will be negative 45. We'll hit I for rotation. Um, and then we will also go all the way to uh, 120. And we will also put one there because it's going to have to end up back there. So then we want to find middle 120. Half of that is 60. And here we'll go 45. So now and we'll make sure to hit I and rotation. And now if we play this, it's going to go back and forth. And I'm actually going to keep this Bezier curve, Bezier curve. Um, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to keep it standard because I want to make this <laughs> quicker than if I spend a whole bunch of time messing with it, but feel free to kind of mess with that curve to get that smoothing really down if you if you want to. Um, I'm also going to um, add a little uh, location to this. I want this to kind of bob up and down, so I'm actually just going to hit I and do location, and then I will open up uh, a new window and go to my graph editor, and with my object selected, um, I'm just going to make sure I have a Z location. I can turn off the other ones. And I can even turn off these ones right now. So I'm just seeing my Z location, which right now is nothing. I'll hit N to open up this little side menu. Go to modifiers, and we're going to add a noise modifier. And now it's just going to jiggle a lot. Uh, like it's in the hands of an excited kid ready to play some video games. But that's uh, too much. So we're going to scale it and also bring that strength up a little bit. I want it to more, that's even too much. I really want it just to kind of bob. And you can see I'm, this is gonna, it's a little harder to get this to loop and that's way too strong. I just want it to really barely bob. Yeah, there we go. And you can see I just happen to, these just happen to line up perfectly. If you need to um, make them actually, like actually line up, you can restrict frame range, frame range to uh, your start and stop points, and then you can blend them in and out uh, if you're not able to get it to line up just from how it starts out randomly. Um, but you can see that's a nice little kind of bobbing, floating uh, uh, Game Boy-esque uh, system. Uh, and now the last thing I want to do is uh, set up my camera. So I want this obviously to be a little more to the front, so I'm going to go to view and I'm just going to camera to view, move this around, pick something over here. Maybe zoom in a little bit. Maybe I want this strength just to be a little bit more. Go to 0.5. There we go. We'll say, I'll give it a little bit of an angle. Perfect. We'll say that's our camera for now. Awesome. We got our nice little bobbing, floating uh, kind of Game Boy system. You can maybe, if you want, you could also like rotate this a little bit. 
on the Y. We'll do that. We'll do like three. We'll say three degree, th three degrees uh, at the beginning and then three degrees at the end because I want that to be constant throughout the whole thing. So it's kind of rotating. And then if you really wanted, you could also give it a little bit of X rotation. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it straight up and down. Perfect. Lovely. Let's get to rendering. There we go. So now we're going to go on over to our compositing window. And you can see we have nothing. We're going to hit use notes and we also have nothing. Why is that? Because we need to render out this image. So I'm just going to stay in compositing. I can just hit F12 or I can go up and hit render image. Uh, and there we go. It's an Eevee so it happened pretty darn quickly. And we got my little uh, Game Boy system rendered out. So uh, a couple things. There we go. Unconnect. Just let it refresh. I'll get a viewer node up here. Shift A to get to a viewer. Perfect. Um, and now, uh, before I get to like the actual rendering style, uh, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a background to this, just using an alpha over. We'll put that right there. Uh, and now we want to switch the inputs because we want uh, the background to be our color. And again, I'll choose kind of like a blue. We'll see what looks good. We can go with the GameCube blue. Um, but again, I want that kind of retro feel. Kind of maybe a little pastel, maybe a little more saturated. Something... We'll go with that for now. That looks kind of nice. Uh, sweet. So, uh, with all that done, uh, here is the trick to getting that uh, low poly, like, PS1 rendering engine kind of look. Um, it's pretty darn simple. Um, basically, there's just a node called Pixelate. Uh, but, uh, you might, you'll see when I do this, when you just plug this in, it doesn't do anything. Uh, and that's because, uh, it needs, it takes this side of it, pixelates it into this side. And right now, these things, the, the input and the output, uh, nothing's changing between them. So it has nothing to really pixelate, no new data is going into there. So I'm going to mute that for now, because what we're really going to do is we're going to grab... Uh, a scale node. We're going to plug that into the beginning. We'll duplicate it and plug it into the end and with our pixelate in the middle. And this first one, um, we want to really uh, change it. Um, I found uh, we're basically scaling this image down. We can scale on the X um, and the Y. Uh, so the scale, this first one, we're going to actually scale down. Um, I found that like 0.1 generally looks pretty good if you're using a, a HD 19 by 20, 1080 by 19 by 20, whatever. Um, Cause after we scale that down, look how tiny it is. It's so small. Uh, but now we want to scale it back to original size. So to get it back to our scale of one, we have to multiply this 0.1 by 10. So that's what we're going to scale both of these by. There we go. We're back to our original size. But it looks like we haven't changed anything, and we really haven't. We scale it down and scale it back up. But that's where this pixelate node comes in. Because if I unmute this pixelate node, look it, it gets pixelated. Um, because it's scaling it down and then it's basically keeping this scale as we bring it back up. It's not preserving any detail, essentially. It's, it's there's new data, it calculates it out. Uh, so, again, you can make this something like uh, 0.2, and then you can make this 5. And you get a little less pixelation. I'm going to go with 0.1. I really like that super pixelated look. There we go. Um, and that's it. Uh, this is where I am. I think uh, the one thing I'm going to do before I uh, fully render out my animation is I'm going to change my screen color to be something a little more green. Like that. And maybe I'll just go back to my regular emission of 1. No, I like the 2. I like it to be bright. There we go. So now I'm going to re-render my image. And you can see I even get that pixelation. Uh, that's that. That's how you render this. And then you can go and you can render that as an animation or it's Eevee. So you can even render out just as a video. But that's it. That's been the tutorial. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Um, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Peace.